Uh, at the same time, Russian long-range aviation made five strikes against sites, against targets in Mykolaiv and Odessa Oblast. At the same time, there is still a danger of uh, further use of cruise missiles by the Russian Federation from Black Sea against military and civilian targets in Ukraine. The enemy continues destroying civilian infrastructure and residential quarters in Ukrainian cities with rocket and aviation strikes and artillery shelling, in particular in Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Luhansk, Mykolaiv, Odessa, and Kharkiv oblasts. The Russian government uh, makes steps towards integrating occupied territories into Russia. Within the framework of celebration of Victory Day, Occupation administrations have increased counterintelligence measures, increased the number of checkpoints and patrols in occupied territories, and uh, introduced a curfew until the 10th of May, as well as introduced restrictions on movement of local people. Also, uh, we noted that uh, occupied territories of Kherson and the Parisian Oblast uh, now uh, to those territories, groups are, are arriving some temporary occupied territories of Crimea and some regions of Russian Federation to create propaganda stories for Russian media. Now briefly about the key areas of operations. In Kharkiv area, enemy's units from the 6th Army of the Western Military District, 41st Army of the Central Military District, and Coast Guard of the Baltic Fleet have been trying to keep our troops from further advancing towards Ukraine's state border. In Izum direction, uh, uh, units from the 1st Tank Army and the 20th Army of the Western Military District of Russia, as well as 29th, 35th, and 36th Army and 68th Armed Corps of the Eastern Military District have been focusing their efforts to, on preparations for uh, uh, continue offensive in Izum Barvinkov and Izum Slavyansk directions. Trying to clarify the positions of Ukrainian troops, uh, occupiers have been doing a reconnaissance. We have noticed it around Petrivska, Dovhenka, and Novodmitrivka. In Donetsk direction, uh, Russian troops continue offensive action in Leman, Severodonetsk, Papasna, Avdiivka, and Kurakhova directions. In order to develop its offensive towards Siversk and Lysychansk, the enemy continues its attempts to cross Siversk and Donetsk River. Near Belohorivka, which is six kilometers to the west of Lysychansk, there have been uh, three Penton crossings. In order to uh, cross this uh, river, the enemy continues using artillery and tactical aviation. In Mariupol direction, the enemy continues uh, blocking our units in Azov Stal steel factory. Uh, and uh, it has been carrying assault actions supported by artillery and tanks. We cannot exclude that bombing will renew by two 22M3 long range bombers. In southern Bugan Tavria area, the aggressor has been using its 8th and 49th Army, as well as 22nd Armed Corps and paratrooper forces has been carrying out combat action in order to improve its tactical situation. Also, the enemy has been increasing fire effect, anti-aircraft defense, and fortifying its positions. In Tavria direction, the enemy also carries out demonstrations, demonstrative actions in order uh, to keep Ukrainian troops in place and prevent them from moving into other areas of operations. In Bessarabia direction, the situation in Transnistria region of the Republic of Moldova remains tense. Local armed units as well as uh, units of the uh, Russian operational uh, uh, group, which stays there, continue uh, to maintain high alert. In Valin police and Siversk areas, uh, there have been no significant changes of situation over the last day. Certain units of Belarusian armed forces, totaling up to seven battalions, continue implementing assignments to uh, increase protection of uh, border between Belarus and Russia and Brest and Homel Oblast. Also, there is still a threat of rocket and aviation strikes uh, from the territory of the Republic of Belarus against targets in Ukraine. 
at checkpoints and in neighboring uh, districts areas of Bryansk and Kursk oblasts of Russia, the enemy continues maintaining its uh, uh, strong uh, border uh, uh, security groups and uh, units of the of Russian armed forces. In Black Sea and CFSOV areas of operations, Ships of the Black Sea Fleet in Black Sea and Sea of Azov continue implementing assignments to isolate the area of combat action, doing reconnaissance and providing fire support for their troops in the coast area. I have to notice that currently in the Black Sea there are already seven carriers of uh, caliber seaborne cruise missiles with their total capacity being up to 50 rockets. 50 missiles. At the same time, Ukrainian armed forces continue uh, destroying uh, the enemy's personnel and equipment. In the last day alone, the units of air defense of the Air Force and ground forces of Ukrainian armed forces have downed six Arlan 10 type UAVs, one four post type UAV, as well as three cruise missiles. In Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, our uh, defenders have re repelled six enemy's attacks, destroyed 20 tanks and artillery system, 28 uh, armored uh, uh, equipment units, one armored vehicle, and five cars and trucks of the enemy. The total losses of the Russian army since the 24th of February until the 9th of May have been shown on this slide. That's all information I have at the moment. Thank you for attention. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. Thank you, Alexander. Dear colleagues, you are welcome to ask your questions. Please speak into the microphone. I'm Vladislav Obuch from Ukraine Forum. I, my, uh, one of my questions is about the information which you just confirmed today, namely that uh, these days on the administrative boundary between the occupied Crimea and temporarily occupied Kherson Oblast, uh, there has been heavy artillery and uh, multiple launch rocket systems brought to that administrative boundary. Which Ukrainian citizen towns are under the highest uh, danger? And is there any probability that those, that equipment will be moved further toward, uh, into the mainland Ukraine? Or it's more about the attempts to uh, keep some Ukrainian troops from moving to other directions. Such actions of the enemy have several purposes. Of course, it's about a so-called maneuver. It's about uh, increasing their forces, though that Ukrainian troops located in certain areas would stay in those areas and not move into other areas of operations. Uh, uh, it's about keeping our troops in place. Second, as we know, uh, Russia has as its goal not only Donetsk and Luhansk, but also Kherson Oblast. So most probably we can expect that that equipment can be used by the enemies there. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, good afternoon. Kyodo News, could you please comment on the security, current security situation in city of Kyiv and Kyiv Oblast? What, uh, how uh, probable are uh, missile strikes against Kyiv and how safe it is it to stay in the city at the moment? Thank you for your question. Uh, the general information about the capital city, of course, is to be commented by Kyiv city military administration. But from the military standpoint, I would like to remind you that both the Ministry and Defense and the general staff continue reminding that uh, the danger, a danger of rocket strikes against capital city and Kyiv Oblast by the Russian Federation is still there. We know about the Iskander tactical uh, rockets being in the Republic of Belarus. Also, we are aware of seven ships in the Black Sea and Sea of which carry seaborne cruise missiles of caliber type and uh, those can also be used by Russia for missile strikes all across Ukraine. At the moment, nobody is uh, guaranteed against such strikes. So we would like to appeal to call again on all Ukrainians, not only those residing in the capital city. Be careful, don't ignore, don't neglect if there are air alerts. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matizanik. Thank you, dear friends. And I'd like to remind you that at 3 p.m. we'll have Ludmila Denisova with us, 
the Ombudsman of the Parliament, the Rada of Ukraine for Human Rights. Please stay with us.